You're watching Unrendered on IKTV. You can follow us on Twitter at iConcepts. I'm Tony Regisford and my guests are Dr. Rosalind Ambrose and Mrs. Nicole Barnaby Baker. When we went out in that first segment, um, Dr. Ambrose, you were more or less given a global, not global, but a, a, a overall description of the process of recognition. And in fact, you said that's a global standard. That's where that word jumped out there. Now, the issue being that you cannot give accreditation just by two or three discrete steps. It's, it's, a, it's a longer it's process, a process than, That's than right. that. And, and the fact that um, programs such as the associate degree programs offered by the college cannot be accredited before they start anyway. You cannot That's grant right. accreditation before the thing actually starts and perhaps several iterations of it. Mm -hmm. okay, that's so a general I, understanding. That's a general mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, it begs the question, therefore, if I'm a student and I am doing an associate degree at the St. Vincent Com Community College, while the accreditation process is in situ, right, what happens to my time that I spend two years doing the associate degree? Um, what is that qualification worth to me? Where can I take it? Because the college has not been given the accreditation. It can't be because the process is, is continuing. So what needs to happen there? How, how can I be assured that, that I'm not wasting my time? Okay, so here you are, student X, and you've got this associate's degree. Um, you heard Mrs. Baker say that these um, uh, degrees, there's an agreement mm -hmm. with the various institutions to accept these uh, qualifications because those institutions on the further end, UE and so, they understand that in order for this degree to be, quote, accredited mm -hmm. at that particular point in time, mm -hmm. that the track record needs to have been done, the race must be run, and then we finally get to the end point. Right. So they understand that. So some of the talkers themselves need to understand that. And what typically happens, like all of the people who graduated from the University of the West Indies, prior to 2000 and whatever, 13. when 2013, 11, 12, 13. when 11, 12, and 13, when the various campuses were granted their accreditation, do you consider that her bachelor's degree was null and void because it was granted to her before the school gained its accreditation in the year 2010? Some of the barristers that are qualified from the University of the West Indies, do they consider that the LLB is null and void? No. What typically happens is that the institutions, accreditation board, will, in using that information that's already available to them, these people, they're the ones that set the stage for the accreditation to happen, yep. and they are therefore what you call grandfathered in. So that the recognition is, while there's recognition already, they then, uh, that degree is now considered accredited mm -hmm. based on the time that you got it and the time that the program It's a grandfathering is process. It's a grandfathering it, process. And and it, it, comes, it comes after, the, if, if after could, they have written it. If I could yes. just come in mm -hmm. here. Um, what we have to realize, the community college in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the other state colleges in the region, what they have been doing, when the associate degrees were being crafted, when the course modules were being developed, they actually were developed with the UWI and UTEC general models in place. So that, that is why you have heard Mr. Scott say at the mm. level of the community college that the UWI assessment teams have come in before and Professor Cobley, mm. in his response to me, to my request, right. he actually said the same thing that Mr. Scott had been saying, that the assessment teams from the UWI came in and in some of the cases they said the standard of the college of some of the ones that have already been approved right. have been higher than the benchmark set by the UWI. So that is why you will hear sometimes about colleges across the world, franchising programs from universities. You, you franchise them in the sense that you model the program off of those universities so that when they come in to assess, what they really check in to see is whether you have adapted whether you have brought in the professors at the levels we told you to bring them right. in at, whether you have had the facilities that we told you yes. you have to have in place to offer our programs. Yes. And we have done this in education yes. for years. In the it's, a yes, it's a that's comparable standard. Yes, it's a comparable standard. That's what it is. Right. The Education Project Management Unit, we did tender dossiers 
where we put out international tenders under the European Union project mm. to do degree programs. We had Cambridge coming in from the UK. We had UTEC coming in from Jamaica. Right. We had people coming from all over the world internationally. And these were recognized universities who crafted programs, UWI as well, mm. Mona. They crafted programs that we said we wanted to be slightly different. We had a case where the bachelor in education pro degrees were being offered and in management. Right. And we said, look, a teacher is in a classroom, they want a career path to management, but while they remain in the classroom until they're promoted, let's say we want a Bachelor of Education degree with an option to teach specific subject programs. Right. So we did that, special terms of reference, gave it to the UWI and UTEC, they crafted the program, brought it in, and one of the programs that was done by UTEC in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, they then launched a master's program afterward yes. so that our students here who had done it, the teachers right. in the schools and the principals could then matriculate into that master's program and right. get credits off. So that is why St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College didn't sit down and say, ah, hmm, what should we teach in our associate degrees? Mm -hmm. No. So they actually the worked with the UWI and UTEC and all of these universities to craft the program so that when the assessment is done, what we have to live up to is the standards set by those institutions. So where is the recognition? And I'm going to ask this question yes. as repetitive as it may yes. mm -hmm. be because this issue has been in the news mm -hmm. um, for at least two weeks now. Where is the recognition of the, what's the recognition status rather, of the associate degrees currently offered by the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College. What's his status? And I want to... to I think to Professor Cobley answers. Oh, Professor yes. Cobley answers, but I can yes. say it again. Mm -hmm. I can say it again. Professor Cobley, in his response, and you don't want me to address the other spin-off about me asking Professor I'm going to ask you that question. Okay. But, but, you but just Professor Cobley the, yes. was careful to say, mm -hmm. you notice in the letter which I requested from him first, mm -hmm. he said that tertiary educational institutions were approved in 2005 and six, so that they could offer the associate degrees and matriculate into the university. And actually, when I was at a board meeting of the college, someone said, but you forgot to get in writing from Professor Cobley mm -hmm. because we have to counteract the false information right. that was permitted into society. So I sent him a quick email and called him in the yes. meeting, send me back an email now. And he was clear to point out that in the same 2005, six, right. they expanded later in the year in 2006 the uwi took a policy decision that all the state colleges that offered associate degrees would be accepted into the uwi as well the, the graduates above 2.5 gpa that is right the benchmark so that's just a question of passing you have to have yes. the right um, and there is the recognition right, you have right. done an associate's degree you have got above 2.5 gpa but you have to be competitive yes because if there are 50 slots in a yes. faculty and there are 70 of you applying to it's get It's a bidding in. process. It's so, a bidding so process. Something may be worth $10, but it can sell for $15. Yes. Let us simply look. Your certificate. You've 60 been people earned. want it. Yes. yes. So you they put the price And, and may I just say for the general population of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, mm -hmm. for them to understand what we are saying, we do a CPEA exam before that it was the common entrance. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of our children who passed the common entrance and now the CPEA. Right. A lot of children want to go into the girls high school and the St. Vincent Grammar School. Right. Those schools only take a maximum of 140 students. Right. So it, think of the 2.5 so GPA like that. The supply is less than the demand. The right. supply is less than the demand. Yes. So more have passed, but only some will get into those two schools. Simple. P.S. You have been accused, and I'm going to address that now. You've been accused basically by the opposition leader that it is only since he brought up the issue of the accreditation of the community college mm -hmm. um, that you ran in, in a panic, more or less, scrambled to get clarification. You, I, I, I can't quote him verbatim, but in effect, he says that you do not know what you're doing, or you didn't know what you're doing, mm -hmm. basically. You didn't even know what the recognition status was of the programs that are offered by the St. Vincent Community College. How do you respond to that? Well, Mr. Regisford, I suppose only those persons who have worked with me through my mm. career will understand the way I operate. But let me tell you something. About two to three weeks ago, mm -hmm. like other Vincentians, I was looking at the evening news on SVG TV 
and I saw some allegations being made. And one statement I will focus on, I am not going to say who said those words, yeah. protect myself. What I heard was someone on the news saying that the Community College of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is not accredited and because the linkage is not accredited and as a result, the UWI, University of the West Indies, is not recognizing the graduates of the associate degrees and by extension, these graduates cannot gain admission into the University of the West Indies. They wasted their time, basically. They wasted and their the time, the degrees associate are worthless. Degree is not worth the paper it's Yes. Written, so, so, now I remem remember I told you earlier that I sit on the UWI Council meetings mm -hmm. and the accreditation process for the UWI, the recognition, everything, I am well aware of the matriculation requirements, but you have to remember, Tony, here am I. I am a humble civil servant. Mm -hmm. My immediate impulse, and I, I can be impulsive at times, mm -hmm. was to call my minister and say, Minister, can you grant me permission, seeing that I'm the government's designation, designated representative, yes. can you allow me to make a statement tomorrow to correct the false information that is being bandied about, at least on the TV. I saw it on the Friday in the newspaper, but mm. for the time it was on the TV. But good sense prevailed. After deep reflection and introspection, and when I talk about this, it is about 15 minutes I'm talking about yes. after the news item mm -hmm. came over. I thought, who will the students and the general population of St. Vincent and the Grenadines believe if I, a humble civil servant, go out there to say, that particular person of stature mm -hmm. compared to my stature mm -hmm. is making false allegations. They don't know the regulations of the University of the West Indies and they are misleading the general public. I thought to myself, they're not going to believe me. So I decided that the only approach I could take was to not let my voice be heard. Let the voice of the institution that was being attacked be heard because essentially the person was saying UWI is not recognizing the associate degrees, UWI is not taking in the students. I said to myself, let UWI defend itself. And I'll tell you something, because of me attending the meetings, I was able to contact Professor Cobley at midnight, mm -hmm. St. Vincent time. It was 11 o'clock in Jamaica. Jamaica right. And he promised me I would get a response the next day, the Thursday, the 18th of September. I had his response and I put it out there, all the radio stations, the media. The UWI defended itself. Professor Cobley was anxious and eager to ensure that the University of the West Indies would not be misrepresented in this country. And he cooperated well with me. So you're saying, um, P.S., that basically your um, step to get clarification from the um, Dean of Admissions, is he? Uh, Pro he, is the, he is the chair of the undergraduate admissions for uh, all of the campus. university, all right. campuses, open campuses, everything. Right. Yes. So that was that's the right person. Yes. That's okay. the most appropriate person. Yes. Most appropriate person. And I think it is very disrespectful oh. that the head of the fountain has spoken and then here are people who ought to know better continuing to mislead the general public. The man okay. has already spoken. I want no to one else has a greater else authority than him yeah. to speak those words. If you permit me to um Yes, but we're, we're, we're at the end of, of this segment. Okay. So at, at this point, let's take it out and we come back. Yes. You know, you, you, you hold your fervor there and um, yes. <laughs> I'll allow you to pick back yes. up your piece. I have something else to say. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's just take this segment out. Thank you. This is Unrendered on IKTV. More with my guests when we come back from the break.